find all the real values of x that satisfies the inequality x square minus x less than zero. Pause this video and give this problem a try. Let's discuss the solution. The solution set of this inequality includes all the real numbers greater than zero and less than one. Let's first factor the quadratic expression on the left side of this inequality. We can do that by simply factoring out x from both the terms of this quadratic expression. So x square minus x is factored into x and x minus 1. For the product of these two factors to be less than 0, one of them has to be positive and the other one has to be negative. This implies that either x is less than 0 and x minus 1 is greater than 0 or x is greater than 0 and x minus 1 is less than 0. In the first case, we have x is less than 0 and greater than 1. No value of x can be simultaneously less than 0 and greater than 1. So there is no value of x that can satisfy this case. In the second case, we have x is greater than 0 and less than 1. This implies that x lies between 0 and 1. So, all the numbers between 0 and 1 satisfies this case, and hence they satisfy the inequality. Thus the solution set of this inequality is the open interval from 0 to 1. We can also solve this inequality using graphical approach. The graph of a quadratic equation y equals a times x square plus b times x plus c, where a, b and c are real numbers and a does not equal 0, is a parabola. The sign of a determines whether the parabola opens up or down, if a is positive, the parabola opens up, and if a is negative, it opens down. To plot y equals x square minus x, we need to know the coordinates of the points where the graph meets the x-axis. At those points y equals 0, so we set x square minus x equals 0. x square minus x can be written as x times x minus 1. Solving it further, we get x equals 0, or x equals 1. Therefore, the graph crosses the x-axis at x equals 0 and x equals 1. Since the coefficient of x square is positive, the parabola opens upward. It is clear from the graph that the given inequality is true between x equals 0 and x equals 1. Thus the solution set is the open interval from 0 to 1. Let's solve this problem using test point method. In this method, we identify the x-intercepts by setting the quadratic expression equal to 0. In between x-intercepts are intervals in which the graph is either above x-axis or below x-axis. In the next step, we pick a test value inside each interval and calculate y at that value. If y is greater than 0, this implies that the graph is above x-axis and hence the quadratic polynomial is positive in that interval. If y is less than 0, this implies that the graph is below x-axis and hence the quadratic polynomial is negative in that interval. So let's first find the x-intercepts. For that we set x square minus x equal to 0. Solving it, we get x equals 0 or x equals 1. Since we want to find the solution for x square minus x less than 0 and not equal to 0, 0, and 1 are not the part of the solution. So we draw the number line with open circles at 0 and 1. This divides the number line into three intervals. First from negative infinity to 0, second from 0 to 1, and the third from 1 to infinity. Now we will pick a test value inside each interval and calculate y at that value. For the interval negative infinity to 0, let's choose x equal to negative 1. You can choose any value of your choice within an interval. At this value of x, y evaluates to 2, which is greater than 0. This means that y is positive on this entire interval, and therefore this interval is not the part of the solution. For the interval 0 to 1, let's choose x equal to 1 half. At this value of x, y evaluates to negative 1 over 4, which is less than 0. This means that y is negative on this entire interval, and therefore this interval is the part of the solution. 
for the interval 1 to infinity, let's choose x equal to 2. At this value of x, y evaluates to 2, which is greater than 0. This means that y is positive on this entire interval, and therefore this interval is not the part of the solution. Thus the solution set is the open interval from 0 to 1. Now let's solve this problem by completing square. Add square of 1 over 2 to both the sides of this inequality. We can write x as 2 times 1 half times x. The quantity on the left side is the expanded form of x minus 1 half whole square. Since all the values in this inequality are non-negative, we can take the principal square root. Doing so we get, principal square root of x minus 1 half whole square is less than 1 half. We know that principal square root of x square is another definition of modulus of x. So we can write this inequality as, modulus of x minus 1 half is less than 1 half. This implies that the quantity x minus 1 half lies between negative 1 half and 1 half. Adding 1 half to this inequality we get, x is greater than 0 and less than 1. Therefore, the solution set of this inequality is the open interval from 0 to 1.